Bach would nib miz it all day. Get it back with that as well. I don't know that he could do 16 with it either. So. Rossi's purification is in his hand. And another hit miss. That seems like a poor. This is not the board position you want Rossi's purification. Rossi's purification That's the wind river, not the best synergy in the world. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, your opponent might just keep Niv Mizzet, uh, Debtors Now, <laughs> and Arbiter. <laughs> There's a really good post in the forums by Zero Man pointing out that there were all these four and five color decks running around the Pro Tour all weekend, and the 12 that got through to Sunday, nobody has more than three colors. Right, and, and at least one of them is running land destruction. You yeah, one team has land destruction in all three decks that people took chances with their mana bases and you know it looked good on paper and it was good for a while but to actually get through 14 rounds of Swiss you needed the consistency of a three color mana base I mean and, I mean we even see and it helped like if you had the ability to punish your opponent's mana base right. and we see a deck like Cytos which is you know very close to two colors true I mean he's just he's really just and the, dipping the, into white very the Boros briefly. deck that Pelkak is running is two color right it's just straight Boros I believe so Yeah, this, this looks like a, a Patrick Sullivan creation. A retail yes, over looking over at their teammates. Yeah, it's kind of disturbing to see uh, Mistral Charger play in this format. Okay, we should, why don't we just go over to table A? Kaji and Nakajima have gotten started into game two. Kaji didn't like losing to those Helldozers. He's actually lowered his curve a little bit with his sideboarding plan. And he's gotten out of Maroi and a Cameron Karyatid. See a bunch of cards in Nakajima's graveyard, but only four lands in play. Oh, he's been dredging his nightmare void. Right, I see a twisted justice that looks like it got hit. Yeah, twisted justice with deprive. So Nakajima has been dredging his nightmare void, right, and he just had his signet putrefied. And if he's been dredging, wow. he's not been uh, drawing lands. So he's got a signet wow. and two he's lands. Drawing. Now he's drawing, facing Roy with only three lands in play. There's a rumbling slum. Rumbling slum for Nakajima. 12 to 18. Maroi flies over again. Nakajima down to 8, and there's a second Maroi. That's lethal next turn. Does Nakajima have an answer to two Maroi's? Let's or are we about to go to game three? He's got, uh... It doesn't look like he does. He is, well, he does have Savage Twisters that he sided in. I'm sure. Can't get the that. You need six mana for that play. No. Oh, Savage and apparently twisters. they stayed in the sideboard. Yeah. He just brought in those Nightmare Voids. Rumbling Slum. Uh, block, please. Please. Block with double block. You can kill my Rumbling Slum. I mean, he can't, he can't bluff Might of the Nephilim uh, <laughs> Psychotic Fury here. They have seen the necklace. And there's Nightmare Void. He just wants to see what's in his deck. And Nakajima scoops him up. Kaji lowered his curve. He decided to be beat down against the land destruction deck. Nakajima's Nightmare Void plan did not work against Double Maroi, that's for sure. And those guys are off to game three. Well, that's so Kaji even sat at a game apiece, and they're going to play one more game to find <laughs> out which team gets the first match win here in the semifinals. Well, that's what we were talking about about the Maroi. Maroi is definitely the beatdown. I, I don't know if that came down on turn three or not. I didn't see if there were signets in play. People just keep them back in their land piles. So sort of land. Nakajima just laughing about it. That's funny. All right. The other game two that's already going on, Nitamura and Tomoharu Saito Looks like we just got started in their game two. Saito mulliganed and then got his giant solitude castigated, but he has now played Dark Confidant as the only uh, non-mana permanent in play. Two cards to play. Yeah. There's Saito on the right, Nitamura on the left. Saito said Dark Confidant was his MVP for the weekend. And he also said he never flipped up hit and run to take eight. <laughs> Which is your I mean a lot of a lot of teams kept uh, kept those cards apart in testing. Right. Just out of the fear of taking eight from hit and run. 
So of course, now that we said that, it'll be like it'll be like announcing the no hitter in baseball. <laughs> Obviously, the next card is. Like the top card hit. is. What is it? Dude, Legionnaire. Sky Knight Legionnaire. So eighteen to seventeen. Cool. Hmm? Saito brought the charge in from his sideboard. Nakamura brought in the four last gasps from his sideboard. And I think while we were coming and bringing the camera over, it looks like he's got a char in his hand. Mm. So. Investigate saw it, so. Sky Knight leaves an air from Saito and crunches over for four. Mitsumura takes four. Now it's 14 to 17. Mitsumura comes apart. Again, uh. Hierarch would seem like it'd be the card that Mitamura wants to see as often as possible for the remainder of this game. He just took two from his uh, shock land. And he's rolling, spoiling away a land and uh, Bob. Wow, that was pretty good. Rolling Spoil, definitely a good card all weekend long. Solifuge, another good card. Carunch. So uh, he's really at two Six here. damage. With the, yeah, with the Char in Psycho's hand, Mitamura is in trouble. It's a Char and a Lightning Helix, actually. So there's enough burn to be lethal in Psycho's hand, but there's also enough creatures to be lethal. Mitamura has got his work cut out for him. It sure looks like we're going to be going to game three. Oh, there's Locks it on Hierarch. That's, that's a good start. Gets him to ten. What else has he got going on? Brings him to eight with the flyer. It looks like he's got another elephant in his hand. It's not about it. I wonder how many damage Psycho actually had to do on that mod. <laughs> like, there's just elephants everywhere. Yeah, there's an elephant and a carrier <laughs> and, and the gray land, shell scare and a castigate. 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 <laughs> he, he would really like to be able to cast, like to get that castigate out there. But I don't know that he'll have time to do that, and uh, he has to play his elephant. Plays. You just have to pick up. Yeah, plays the bounce <laughs> 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 Charge the elephant to clear a path for Solifuge. That seems like a good play. Still gets to deal four to the head, and now he's, there's not a blocker for next turn. So Saito wisely uses his char on an elephant, smashes over for six, meet Amura down to four. We know he's got another elephant, though. That'll take him to eight. He'll go to the so six, six from he'll the fire. Th he's the he's three at from three. The helix, so he's effectively at three. So we, we need another burn spell. Or Saito left up enough mana to play lightning helix and end step if he wants to. Hit and run would be a perfectly acceptable draw at this point for him. Sure. <laughs> would you uh, would you helix the dome here? I think the answer is yes, right? I think I the answer is yes because you could draw Solifuge. And you could also draw a uh, Demon Fire eventually in one of the right. L bent. Right, if he draws another, so, but you wouldn't have the mana to cast Helix and Solifuge. Yep. Choose Solifuge. Saito sees there's no numerous draws where he would rather have already cast that Lightning Helix. Goes ahead and uses the mana while it's available. Draws, I didn't see what it was. 